My name is Louise Ann Noeth. I am known as Land Speed Louise. And the reason I'm up here is that my game for the past 25 years has been in land speed racing out of the Bonneville Salt Flats. Uh, this particular book is my latest, and it deals with all the women who have gone out there. It told me that I didn't know a doggone thing about this sport, as, even though I'm considered the sports historian, not just for the country, but for the world. You know that deal where they tell you you got to ask the right question? Well, two years ago, I finally asked the right question. This is after setting the world land speed record for wheel-driven cars that we still own at 458 miles an hour with the FIA, but our world record is at 482 miles an hour with a one-way of 503, wheel-driven. If you all got here in some kind of mode of transportation other than the monorail, you got in the thing, you turned it on, you put it in gear, and the wheels turned. We're the fastest of them all. But I asked the question, how many women have done this? Because you might have one girl on a team, a bunch of guys. And the answer was, hmm, when I handed my manuscript to the publisher, in 120 days, by the way, so I could have them for Bonneville, there were 350 women who had set more than 1,000 land speed records. Blew my boots and my helmet off me. <laughs> I had no idea. I figured, oh, 100, 150. What did I know? I didn't know. I didn't ask. So part of the reason I do this is to identify those women. The idea that they had been doing this since 1949 when the hot riders were up there, forget it. The first woman raced in 1972. All of those records and all of that racing was done in that period of time to today. I started my life as a kid in the south side of Chicago, no money, and the only way I got to drive all the different hot rods is because I have an artistic talent and I would put stuff on the cars and I wouldn't take money, I would make them pay for the paints and the brushes and the gold leaf and all that, and I said, you get to let me drive your car for an hour. You have a more difficult thing. I want two and a half hours, but I don't want anybody to think I'm dating you, I just want to drive your cars. <laughs> Little did I know it was putting me in a position to be a test car driver for newspapers, car, uh, magazines, and various things around the world. I was the first female editor of the Hot Rod Performance and Custom Directory and the Peterson Publishing. As far as I know, the only editor in charge of any automotive magazine while Bob Peterson owned it. Probably. And I went on from there and decided that I couldn't work in the corporate world. I don't take really, you know, I'm not a real obedient girl. So I went off to do other things, and I founded Land Speed Productions. I have covered every type of motorsport on the planet, other than swamp buggy racing, and I would like to do that. <laughs> but everything, whether it be open wheel, closed course, uh, motorcycle, I have covered that in one way or another over the years. If I don't do it now, it's because I really don't care much about it. About the only thing I can tell you I'm ignorant of, and I hope to go to my grave that way, is I'm not a stock car person. I just, there's only so much you can put in your head, okay? Yeah. This is my new book, but this is not my message. Oh, I'm doing this. All right, my message is, <laughs> get rid of this. This is the message to you girls. This is from my friends at JPL. Y'all just think about, oh, they launched the Hubble. Oh, the James Webb. Oh, the mission to Mars. Oh, the solar thing. Do you know that JPL monitors, and they're monitoring right now and 24-7, 365, hundreds of satellites and things that are all around the universe and the galaxy? They have download links going. They have uploads. They're sending messages, and they're bringing them down. They keep track of their kids out there in space and what they're doing so that things can be done better for all of us here. That's the reason we have these ladies here with us today. Because together, and only together, ladies, not being cat fighty, <laughs> can we raise each other up. We have to work together. I just love racing. I love helping people. I, I love for young girls and guys to come up to me and say, hey, I want to race, what can I do? So I just tell them, go to your local racetrack um, and take your time. Find the test and tune days. A lot of people think you have to have all this money and you have to have this 
big setup, trailers and all that. You don't need any of that, honestly. If you can ride the thing to the track, just go. Take your time. Don't listen to a lot of people because people are going to tell you all these things. That was my biggest thing when I first started. They're like, I have somebody who's like, yeah, just twist the throttle, go. No, I'm going to be on my neck. <laughs> you know, so I just, had, I, I just did a lot of YouTubing and watching other people at the racetrack. But um, that's a little bit about me and who I am. So my name is Michelle Delapena. I grew up in IndyCar. I grew up in racing in general. My father was a race car driver. He came to this country from Argentina and wanted to race. And so he funded Formula Ford, Formula 3 series, which were like small little open wheel mini Indy cars. Um, so I grew up in Northern California. I went to Sonoma Raceway, which was then called Sears Point. So I was the baby in the stroller with the big earphones on as my father was racing. Um, and as I got older and he continued to race, racing is incredibly hard. Getting sponsorship is really difficult. Um, he pivoted to team ownership. And so he raced in Formula Atlantics. He brought up Jimmy Vassar, you may know. Um, and Jimmy Vassar won the championship with him and then started his indie career. So uh, my dad raced in uh, Formula Atlantics for a couple of years with Richie Hearn and then went on to IndyCar and then raced at the Indy 500. So I spent a lot of time in Indianapolis and spent a lot of time at the Speedway and so it is just a really special place for me. Oh, sorry. Um, and I'm an only child, um, so my father raised me to believe that I was much better at everything than I actually am and that I could do literally anything and raised me like he would have a son. Um, so I really had no fear about going after what I wanted. I wasn't really interested in motorsports. I went to school and went to college for something completely different, did a few different things um, in my career. I'm an entrepreneur and other things, but a few years ago my dad passed unexpectedly and I was kind of trying to figure out how to sort of honor his legacy. I have this indie car, I have suits and helmets, and I'm like, what am I supposed to do with all this stuff? I also coincidentally have three sons, um, and my two older sons go-karted with my dad, and my middle son still go-karts. And so about two years ago, I was at the track with him, and out of a grid of 28-year-olds, there were two girls. And so it just got me thinking why there aren't more girls in karting, how do we get more girls in karting, what are the barriers to karting, maybe we start a scholarship in my dad's name, and that's kind of was the impetus for the foundation. Um, you know, I grew, I had the luxury of growing up in motorsports, but, you know, it's not a sport that you're going to play at school or at the Y or in your cul-de-sac. It's just something that if someone doesn't sort of expose you to it, chances are it's gonna be hard for you to get into it. And then not to mention that it can be costly, it's very time consuming. So for parents and other adults, it's, it's, it's hard to support a child in that. And I thought, well, maybe we could put the infrastructure in there to sort of like find these young girls and give them a scholarship into karting so that all of that's underwritten. And then as I started reaching out to everybody that I, I grew up knowing, they said, well, that's really great and also, <laughs> There's just not a lot of women in motorsports in general, like mechanics, pit crew, engineers, all, there's just hugely underrepresented and particularly women of color. So I thought, well, let's take this scholarship idea and then sort of extrapolate it into a full-fledged foundation. So about a year and a half ago, we started the Della Pena Next Gen Foundation and the aim is just exposing young girls to motorsports initiatives. So it's everything from go-karting all the way to all the STEM components all the careers in motorsports that you could possibly have. So we have these sort of initiative, these sort of exposure events where we bring young girls out to the track and we give them like a full day and a full VIP day at the track. We did it at Laguna Seca, it was our pilot event. We brought a girl scout troop out of Oakland and we brought them out there and we had my dad's old Indy car and we had suits and helmets for them to try on. They met Kara Adams from Firestone. They went to the Andretti team, Vassar team, Herda, and they walked around and they got to meet all these amazing people and they got to hold like really expensive steering wheels and like blew <laughs> their minds. And it was something that they'd never seen before, right? So that's sort of like the first phase of what we do. And then the next phase is these sort of fellowships where we have women like Beth Preda and other amazing women who will have a young girl shadow them for a week and they get to see what women in motorsports do. So it could be a team owner, it could be an engineer, it could be a driver, and they get to sort of see where they might fit in motorsports. And then the last phase that we're rolling out in 24 is gonna be our scholarship program. So we will have a young girl um, and we will 
give her a scholarship so that she can do a full season of karting, which will include obviously all the gear, all the support, mechanics, and, de and development. So it's really great to have all of that, but if you don't know how to <laughs> drive a go-kart, you're not gonna get very far. So have someone to help you, like what are lines? Why do you follow lines on a track? What, how do you do that? When do you turn? Are you braking too fast? And so being able to help them sort of foster and grow their talent and passion. Girls tend to drop out of sports and STEM initiatives, you know, at the end of junior high and beginning of high school. So our programs are geared from five to 16. Um, my kids started go-karting at four, which is obscene, but that is when they start. Um, it's terrifying to see a little four-year-old flying around at 50 miles an hour, but they somehow figure it out. So, you know, our whole, I, I love racing. It is just, it, this whole foundation is a love letter to my dad. I just love this sport and I'm so invigorated by it and I just wanna see it more accurately represent the world that we live in, which is to say more women and more color. So if we can do anything to sort of provide opportunity and then shuttle these young girls into the hands of people who can give them that opportunity, that's really what we're all about. Everybody at the top really wants change, um, but not everybody's willing to do the work at like five, six, seven years old to get these young women involved and invested. So that's what we're all about, and I'm just honored to be here, and I'm happy people keep uh, you know, showing up. I will just one, say one thing. We have an advisory council. We have an industry council with Beth and Lynn St. James, which just makes me just go out of my mind because I grew up with Lynn. She was racing with my dad, so the fact that she answers my calls and Beth answers my calls blows my mind. But we also have a driver committee with amazing drivers. So Kelsey Rowlings is one of our drivers and she's like amazing. And we also have Michelle Abate and we have all these amazing drivers. So um, we're just collecting all these amazing women that are doing amazing things and we're just collaborating so we can just help lift each other up. And you know why those people are helping her? Because the part of the reason you're here, some of you are looking to put a helmet on, to put that fire suit on, to go racing. And they say, oh, we've got to put more women in the seats. She's doing that at five years old. They are putting on the helmets. They are getting in the seats. They are exposing, she's exposing young girls to this, to say, is this something you want to do? Well, maybe, maybe not. But if you don't know that it's possible for you, how do you know if you like it? I can't love what I don't know if I don't know if you don't teach me, if you don't show me, if you don't let me. And that, I think, is the most powerful weapon, if you want, in motorsport, I think, because you've got to have some kind of weapon to do this, that she does. She's putting them in the seat, and that, I think, is probably the greatest gift that you can give any young girl, the choice, the chance. Mm -hmm. And don't, isn't that what all of us want, a choice and a chance? That's it. So, yeah. Thanks, Michelle. Well, thank you. And this one, that Beretta. <laughs> in the news, literally every day, when I was living in Detroit, and I was living there for, you know, for 10 years, working for car companies, there's this, there, everybody's lamenting the shortage of talent. There's, there's a shortage of engineers. We're concerned because engineers are retiring at a faster rate than they're being backfilled. There were people being flown in from, you know, internationally for like two-year assignments because we had to fly people in because there weren't, there wasn't enough homegrown talent. So I'm hearing this belly aching in all these meetings. Um, I also now am running these motorsport programs concurrently with my responsibilities of the brand. I know why car companies use racing. They use it to sell cars, but they also use it internally as a recruitment tool. Uh, car companies always have usually, if, you know, if you're General Motors, if you're Ford, if you're Fiat Chrysler, if you're BMW, if you're Mercedes, your performance division people are also working on the racing. Makes sense, right? Your AMG guys or girls are gonna be working on your race programs. It's not gonna be the people making the big GL, right? So what car companies were doing is they would take their best and brightest and put them on a rotation through the racing programs mm -hmm. and then cycle them out. So it's a wonderful experience. Mm -hmm. It's exciting, it's sexy when they're at the college fair. Yeah. So that's how they were using it. I'm seeing it happening. But I also know, so okay, so little secret. The idea of the women's forward race team was not my idea. What? Uh, it was brought to me by a, by a guy. Spoiler. <laughs> so, um, and the reason for that was I was, at, I was at Fiat Chrysler and a gentleman who I knew, so one thing I will say when you're the director of motorsport programs, mm -hmm. you get a lot of phone calls yeah. from drivers, 
actually riders, because we actually sponsored Supercross and Motocross, so we had a little two-wheel uh, two stuff. Um, and uh, you get a lot of calls from man driver managers, right? Because you, I, we are hiring in a way. We had a NASCAR program, we had a sports car program, so I got to know a, a network of these people. And this guy called me up, who I still know uh, close to, who lives in London, who was representing some drivers. And he actually said, hey, can I just run an idea by you? <clears throat> what do you think about a woman's program for the Indy 500? And I said, yeah, well, you know, what do you mean? He's like, what if, you, he's like, I was just, he represents a very famous F1 driver. He represents, well, several, but now he is Sergio Perez. He made it for Checo Perez. He's his manager. So Checo at the time was uh, driving for Force India. And so my friend Adrian was on the phone with me and he said, hey, so this past weekend I was at such and such race and I go into the Force India garage and I saw two women engineers. I was like, what? <laughs> it was like, you know, two unicorns like sipping yeah. at, the, at the well. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> so uh, he's like, but what if, he goes, but you know, think about it. What if you got like a bunch of women together? And, and so I was like, yeah, you know, whatever. So he's just running the idea by me. You're a lady in racing. <laughs> and so I started thinking about it and then I couldn't stop thinking about it for like three, four days. And I thought, wait, there's something here. We, as, car co as the car company, okay, we're using racing to attract attention. We're using it to, why don't we use it as a recruiting tool, like more broadly? Because, respectfully, if you're General Motors or Fiat Chrysler or Ford, you're going to college fairs. And that's where you're trying to get people from and, and trying to like entice them now. Mm -hmm. It's too late. I need like kids younger than that to know that it's possible. Yeah. So my thought was, and this is me having a business degree and not being an ex-racing driver, was, okay, I'm solving a business problem. Mm. We need to go hire funnel. Mm -hmm. Started doing some research, because I'm a dork, and figure out that you can affect a kid's trajectory of what they want to be when they grow up between 10 and 12. Mm. Sweet spot. So what if we want to talk to 10 and 12-year-olds? Racing is something that's fun. It's like the spoonful of sugar. My team is not to create a bunch of racing mechanics. Mm -hmm. I want you to think it's interesting, pay attention in school, and go work for Boeing. Mm -hmm. I happen to have a race team. Mm -hmm. Now, that's the big broad thing. Honestly, more micro than that, we all love racing. Mm -hmm. We love it. Mm -hmm. It's our life. If you look at my bookshelf, mm -hmm. it's about people in racing, history of racing. I mean, I'm kind of a one note. <laughs> fun at parties. <laughs> um, I, you know, the reason why I want to do this and why most of us are doing this, we want racing to survive for many years. We want to broaden the audience. So diversity is not a, a nice, cute thing to do. We need people to buy tickets. We need them to watch in the stands. We need them to watch from home on Peacock. <laughs> <laughs> and how do you do that? They need to know that it's for them. Yeah. Right. I mean, with all due, it's, it can't be just like old white dudes racing. Nope. And it can't be, because that's not what the world is. Right. Mm -hmm. So selfishly, I want more people to love it the way I do. Yeah. So that's why I created the team. Now, but then it's also solving a business problem. So I decide, so two last things. I decide that I'm gonna start this. So I say to my friend Adrian, great idea a couple days later, I can't stop thinking about this. He's like, what if we work on it together? Boom, 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 and you know, seven years later, I'm in the Indy 500. Um, <laughs> so I resign from, in, from Fiat Chrysler and I start working on this. And it's funny because to your point about like what Louise said about you about the confidence, um, I was then so in it, right? And so somebody asked me a year ago, what made you think you could start an IndyCar team? And my actual answer is, it never occurred to me that I couldn't. There you go. Amen. Yep. That's it. That's it. Right? That's it. And one last thing I will say. So then last year, so we do that. We have this race team. Um, we race this year, partial season. I'm now working on next year. But last year, I, I uh, aligned with Lynn St. James to create this Women in Motorsport North America. And the idea is to have women working together. Again, I'm a business person. So it's that idea of like, let's link elbows. Let's help each other. Let's create this network. Um, but I have to say that I wouldn't have gotten to even be on the grid last year without many different people who reached out, who offered advice, wanted to find out about my project, what can I do to help? And one of the people who called me was Michelle's dad. <laughs> I'd, never, I'd never met him. And he called me, and he, like unsolicited, he's like, hi, this is John Della I, I heard that you're working on this thing. Like, tell me about it. I want to help. 
Because there are certain people in the business that understood the end game. We love it. We want it to survive. And so that's, that's really, really kind of cool. So Women in Motorsport North America now is this alliance of just a network of women working in the business. We want more women to come in. We want them to know that they're welcome. They, we want them to have mentors and peers that they can talk about. And uh, there is also a motorcycle world champion in the audience right now. Sitting back there, Steffi Bell, um, who is um, uh, motocross. So she's uh, dirt, uh, but very, very uh, fast uh, world champion. And she is also on, in our committee because we need to expand more to two wheel. We need to expand things like uh, land speed, drag racing. The whole point is all disciplines of racing, all roles, all welcome. Yes. That's it. And you think about this. I'm a licensed pilot. I have flown many, many different things. I am also very talented when it comes to taking 150 foot gaff rig schooners and sailboats out in the blue water where you can't see the land for several days. I have driven every type of doggone car, but not a Countach. A Mira, though, a Mira. Through all of this, I'm not trying to shine any buttons. What I'm trying to tell you that through all of this, because I was a journalist, I had doors open because I had to write the story. I have never met a car, a truck, a motorcycle, an airplane, or a boat that operated differently because it was a girl or a boy driving it. Everything, every machine, it responds to input. Good input, good response. Bad input, bad response over the wall.